Hey guys, welcome to uh, part two of my favorite science fiction films. Um, I'm just gonna get right into it. Um, next up, though, it's animation. I have to add this to the list. That is, and it's too bad because it was such a great film and nobody really paid attention to it. Um, a selective few did, and a selective few, like myself, absolutely fucking loved the soundtrack. And that is 2000's Titan AE. I was lucky enough to see this in the theater, um, and I was like, whoa, especially the um, scene where um, they're flying through the clouds and there's like these kind of almost like space angel kind of things. At one point I thought that it was actually real, that it was an animation, and I was like, oh my god, this is fantastic. But um, it wasn't a big hit. Um, I think it actually put Fox Animation Studios out of business for a while, which is so sad, because this was a fantastic movie, but it didn't make any money at the box office. And like the um, thing here says, this is the movie Star Wars fans have been waiting for. Well, that is actually true, because I love Phantom Menace. It was okay. Um, hated Attack of the Clones, and number three was pretty good, but I mean... This this was fucking phenomenal. It's just so bad um, that it didn't take off. But yeah, if if you have <clears throat> the chance to have seen this movie or listen to the epic soundtrack, because all the songs in it are great, yeah. <laughs> well, um, I don't know if this classifies as fantasy, more fantasy, but it's a childhood favorite of mine, and it has to be added to the list. Um, again, like Transformers, I played with these toys as well. Oh, fuck my hair. <laughs> and that, of course, was 1987's Masters of the Universe. Um, what can you, it, it's so cheesy. It, it hasn't aged very well, but it's still so fun to watch. Like, I never played with Barbies as a kid. I played with He-Mans and G.I. Joes and Transformers and Hot Wheels. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, next one up was a, a movie that a lot of people didn't think was going to be a great hit and it lucky enough was uh, great chemistry between the two stars um, great everything and that was 1997's Men in Black um, I keep hearing they're making a Men in Black 3 but I kinda hope they don't I mean the second one was yeah, okay I have to give it a rewatch I haven't watched it in a very long time but this was fantastic. I think this was one of the biggest surprises of 1997. It's fun. It's it's fun, funny, it's charming, it's everything. So, yeah. <clears throat> this is one going towards fantasy, but I had to add it. Um, not a lot of people know of this. It was a TV miniseries, and I loved it because I'm a... I've said before, I'm a huge fan of Sam Neill. I have been since I saw him in 1990's uh, Hunt for Red October, which was when I saw it. Um, and that was Merlin. This was a really good movie. It is very long. It's three hours long. But it is fantastic, and it was so fun to watch. You had, like, Sam Neill, Helena Bottom Carter, John, Gerald. Rector Hauer, Miranda M Richardson, I Isabella Rossellini, and Martin Short. You cannot go wrong. There is a sequel to this, but I say completely forget about it. It sucked. I got 20 minutes into it and I turned it off. I tried watching it again. I got 40 minutes into it I turned it off. It was so god awful, but this was just fantastic. It was so much fun to watch. And the treat is, it's the creatures in this were done by the Jim Henson Company. And funny enough, the music is done by the guy who did the score to The Dark Crystal. So, check this out. Now we get... Now, as for Star Wars, I picked my three favorites. I'm gonna get shit, because Empire is not one of them. I like Empire, but do I think it's the best one? No. Um, I'll go backwards. My third favorite is Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Sith? Sith? Sith. Um, considering I hated Attack of the Clones. It, I, I thought it sucked. 
I I mean all three of us, my parents and I went to see it. We've been we're huge we're not huge Star Wars fans, but we love it. And we all three of us hated the movie. I have it because I'm a completist and I I have to complete with the exception of Halloween three because Michael Myers isn't in it. But I had to complete it and I was like, Well, I wonder how this is gonna be and I thought this was pretty damn good. It was one of my favorite films of two thousand five. Um it was a great end to the um, to the entire series, and I love the fight between Anakin and Obi Wan. I thought that that's like almost twenty, thirty years into the waiting to see this, and it was just fantastic to see Darth Vader back on the big screen. Well, for me, since ninety seven when I got to see the special editions of Star Wars, but technically nineteen eighty three. So yeah. The next one up is, of course, Episode 4, A New Hope. You know what, you can't... Of course, this is going to be in my top three. You guys are going to shit yourselves when you see number one. But I always thought this was way better than Empire Strikes Back. I just thought it was fantastic. And though I had to see the special editions in the theater, it was fucking great to finally see Star Wars on the big screen and see what my parents had been talking about. So, yep, Episode 4. And what could possibly be number one? I put my Star Wars list on JoeBlow.com and almost everybody shit themselves when they said, found out this is my absolute favorite Star Wars movie. And that is Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. I have always loved this one. I don't know why m many people diss it, but I have always loved it. I love the Ewoks. I love everything about this movie. Um, particularly the fight between Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader. Oh my god, it was so epic, and I hated seeing this in the theater, especially when they fucked up the Ewok dance at the end. I literally went, that's why, like, for the changes in Star Wars and Empire, I didn't mind, but I literally went out when they came out with this, that had the, um, um, the newer edition and the theatrical release. This was the only one I went and bought, because I had to have the Ewok song. But yeah, this has always been my favorite. I don't know why. I, I just enjoyed it a hell of a lot more. And even my dad, I think this is his favorite out of the Star Wars movies. But I have to ask him when I'm talking to him again. Um, yeah. And next one up is another one I'm trying to get Justin to see. John Carpenter fan that you are and you've never seen this. You have to see it. And that is 1984's Starman with Jeff Bridges and Karen Allen. This is the only John Carpenter movie to ever get an Oscar nomination, and that was for Jeff Bridges' Bridges Bridges performance. I can't talk. It's two in the morning. Um, but um, I grew up watching this one as well. Um, this was my in. This was my. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh God! The first time I ever saw a movie directed by John Carpenter. That works. I was just trying to think of a. F word, but I couldn't think of it. But it is such a great movie, even though it it, it is it's a sci-fi romantic film. It's it's a great film. It's hard to believe that the master of horror directed this because it is so fantastic. <clears throat> and of course, 1980, same year as Starman, Jim Cameron's Terminator. And what can be said about this? It's fantastic. It's also in my top 100. It's a little bit on the low side because there's about 49 movies I thought were a little bit better. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I know a lot of people prefer this over two, but it's the same thing. Everybody prefers two over this, but that doesn't mean that this isn't as great. It is absolutely fantastic, and I so have to get this on Blu-ray. <clears throat> Another one more. Um, fantasy based but it's a childhood favorite and it introduced me to Ridley Scott in 1986 and that of course is legend what can you say about this film it is absolutely awesome I never understood why people hated it <clears throat> in this case I don't know which one is better the um, director's cut with the Jerry Goldsmith score or the one that we all know with the Tangerine Dream score um, I love both films. I mostly watch the director's cut because I love listening to the commentary by Ridley Scott. 
Um, and the funny thing is, this like I said, this came out in '86, and on the director's cut, there's a piece of Jerry Goldsmith's score. Um, after they kill like the Leatherface type pig in the kitchen, it it's actually the exact same music used in Psycho 2. I, I nearly shit myself when I heard that because that's Jerry Goldsmith recycling something he's done before. Um, but yeah, this is a fantastic movie. I agree with what Justin and Jamie, because everybody knows Jamie loves this movie as well. Um, this is an absolutely fantastic movie. To hell what everybody says. Um, another one um, from 1976, which I was introduced to a couple of years ago, and I loved it. I don't know why I didn't see this when I was younger, and it's called Logan's Run, which unfortunately they are remaking, and I'm pissed off about it. Um, of course, um, Jenny Ag uh, Agater, you know, from American Wealth in London, Michael York, who we all know as Basil from the um, Austin Powers films, and also a very young Farrah Fawcett is in this. Um, I can't really go into details because I've already used 11 minutes, and I don't know how the hell I did that. Um, so yeah, well, I'll do a better video with uh, talking about this, but this is a really good, it's cheesy, and it, uh, like some other films, it hasn't aged very well, but it is fun to watch. Of course, another great one, Steven Spielberg, 1993, the last, best, the, the last greatest film of my childhood, and that, of course, is Jurassic Park. I couldn't believe it when they brought dinosaurs back, because, um, seeing the T-Rex, I was like, like, I'm 12, and they thought I would be so scared of this, so they had to make my dad come with me, and I, we left the theater, and I said, you thought I was going to be scared, my dad's the one who nearly shit himself, <laughs> I'm watching horror films, you think dinosaurs were going to scare me, but yeah, this is, too bad the book absolutely sucked, I hated the book, I tried reading it so many times, and I could not get into it, I get, like, maybe 100 pages in it, and I gave up, but this is one of Spielberg's absolute best films, and like I said, the last greatest film of my childhood. I think some people will be extremely happy that this is on my list. It came out in 1999, it's sci-fi comedy, but it's so much fun, and that is Galaxy Quest. It's like Star Trek in, um, in so many ways. It is so much fun to watch. Tim Allen, Sigourney Weaver, and Alan Rickman are just priceless in this film. And so are all everybody else in this film. It is just so good. I got to see this twice in the theater. So once with my dad, and then the next time him and I went, and we took my mom, and she loved it just as much as us. So yeah. Another great John Carpenter flick from 1981, and that is Escape from New York. Can't really say much about this that hasn't really been said. Snake Plissken is one of the best fucking characters in the world. Still trying to figure out how I went through 13 minutes very quick, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, everything about this movie is fantastic. They remake... I know there's a remake that's been talked about for a couple years. I hope they don't do it, because we'll be pissed off. Um, what should I... And... An another one. One of Paul Verhoeven's best from 1987. Y'all know what that is. That's Robocop. This is... Another great one. It's very brutal, but it's it's like one of Paul Verhoeven's best films. Again, not not much can be said about this. It's a fantastic movie. You all know it, and of course, this is the Steel Book. It's just and I lucked out on that. Um, and I'm gonna have to end this. And I thought I would be able to do it in two. It looks like I'm gonna have to do it in three. Another. I'm going to end this on another childhood favorite that I saw back in 1986. It was one of my first restricted films that I could ever watch. And it got me, it was my intro to Sean Connery. It was my intro to the band Queen. And it also gave me uh, my love, sorry, my love of the band, love of Scotland. And that, of course, is Highlander. Highlander is a great fucking film. I don't think half, half the sequel shouldn't be made, though I do like uh, End of Time. This is fantastic, specifically the music by Queen. And while everybody loves Princes of the Universe, which is a great song, I am extremely partial to Who Wants to Live Forever with Queen and my, the late Michael Kamen together. Oh, it's fantastic. Clancy Brown, he fucking kicks ass in this movie. 
So does Christopher Lambert as Connor McLeod. It's just a fantastic movie. Uh, hope I'm hoping a lot of you guys see it. If not, <laughs> to you. <laughs> okay, guys, I have to. Sorry, I have to end it here. I'm past 15 minutes, so I will see you in part three.